Women play such an important role in each household, serving as a teacher, a role model, and as a guidance counselor to the next generation, instilling morals and ethics, ultimately molding the next generation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to address you this morning during the opening ceremony of your 30th Trinial World Conference. This event is significant for me with my family's long history of membership of the Associated Country Women of the World and your important work with and for rural women globally. As we gather here today, we know that we are faced with a critical challenge that requires our immediate attention and action, and that is climate change. The Earth's natural systems are under immense pressure due to human activities, including deforestation, continued use of fossil fuels and industrialization. These activities have led to a rapid increase in greenhouse gas emissions, resulting in a rise in global temperatures, extreme weather patterns, and a plethora of other adverse effects. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimates that the Earth's surface temperature could rise up by up to 5.8 degrees Celsius by the end of the century if greenhouse gases emissions are not reduced. As ACWW has highlighted in many of its statements and activities, climate change can have a significant impact on women's health, particularly in areas where natural disasters are becoming more frequent and severe. Looking locally, Malaysia's population is projected to reach 38.4 million by 2050, putting increased pressure on natural resources and accelerating climate change. Our country is home to the third largest area of tropical forests in the world, after Brazil and Democratic Republic of the Congo. However, deforestation remains as a major issue in the country, with an estimated 46% of the country's land area covered by forests in 2015, down from 62% in the 1950s. Malaysia is highly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, including sea level rise, increased frequency and intensity of extreme weather events, and changes in rainfall patterns. These impacts could have significant consequences for the country's economy, particularly in the agriculture and tourism sectors. However, it is not too late to take, to take action. By implementing sustainable natural resource management practices, we can mitigate the effects of climate change and preserve our planet from for future generations. Sustainable natural resource management, of course, refers to the responsible use and conservation of natural resources, such as water, land, air, and minerals. It involves balancing economic, social, and environmental concerns to ensure that these resources are considered in a manner that is both sustainable and equitable. And there are many experts and professionals who know this around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, in my home state of Pahang, we have repeatedly seen the devastating impacts of flooding each monsoon season. And our federal government, thanks to our honorable prime minister, has invested in flood mitigation projects. But we must also plan ahead and prepare earlier and more holistic. We need to draw up strategies to shift from traditional economic resources, such as mineral products and timber, to alternative economy resources. Malaysia is one of 17 mega diversity countries in the world, recognized for its rich flora and fauna. And I'm fully supporting efforts to ensure that forest reserves and other safeguarding measures are not only implemented, but expanded. Sustainable natural resource management is a critical component of climate change mitigation. By conserving and protecting our forests, we can reduce carbon dioxide emissions and prevent the loss of biodiversity. Forests act as carbon sinks, absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it in their biomass. In addition to sequestering carbon, forests provide vital ecosystem services such as regulating the water cycle, supporting biodiversity, and providing, 
providing habitat for wildlife and also for the local indigenous people community who live around the forest. Forests are under threat from deforestation and unsustainable logging practices. Deforestation results in the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and contributes to global warming. It also leads to soil erosion, loss of biodiversity and the deg degradation of water resources. By implementing sustainable forest management practices, such as selective logging and reforestation, we can conserve our forests and reduce the impact of climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, another critical component of sustainable natural resource management is the responsible use of water resources. Water is essential for life and is required a wide range of human activities from agriculture and, and industry to household use. However, water scarcity is becoming an increasingly significant problem in many regions of the world, affecting more than 40% of the global population and getting worse every year. Climate change is inflaming this problem by altering precipitation patterns and increasing the frequency and severity of droughts. To address this issue, we must implement sustainable water management practices such as rainwater harvesting, groundwater recharge, and water use efficiency measures. These practices can help to conserve water resources and reduce the demand for fresh water. According to the United Nations, agriculture, forestry, and other land use account for approximately 24% of global greenhouse gas emissions. However, agriculture also has the potential to play a significant role in mitigating climate change. By implementing sustainable agriculture practices such as conservation tillage, agroforestry, and the use of organic fertilizers, we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions and increase the carbon sequestration potential of all agricultural land. In addition to reducing greenhouse gas emissions, sustainable agriculture practices can also improve soil health, increase crop yields, and promote biodiversity. By integrating sustainable agriculture practices into our food systems, we can ensure that we are providing healthy, nutritious food to our growing population while also protecting the environment. The transition to a sustainable economy is criti critical to addressing climate change and achieving the, the sustainable development goals. A sustainable economy is one that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It involves a shift away from the linear resource intensive economic model that is driving climate change towards a circular regenerative economy that prioritizes sustainability, social equity and environmental protection. Women are disproportionately impacted by climate change but are not always included in decision making processes related to climate adaptation and mitigation. It is important to ensure that women's voices are heard and that they are involved in all stages of decision making from planning to implementation and execution. It's important to ensure that women have access to health care, including reproductive health care, and that their health needs are taken into account in climate change adaptation and mitigation efforts. By addressing the gender specific impacts of all climate change, we can create a more equitable and sustainable future for all. This is the work that ACWW has been doing at the local, national and international level and will continue to do well in the future. And I ask that the ACWW rise up to the challenge of climate change as the ACWW have, has, as my mother reported to me, 10 million members and 10 million people out of almost seven, eight billion people in the world. It only takes a, 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 hand, a small um, few handful of committed citizens around the world to actually make good change for the people of the world. So you have my, our support and best wishes. Thank you. Ampuntuanku. Wa billahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.